Hello everyone, welcome to episode 7 of Tracknowledgement, uh, the series where I delve into uh, behind the scenes look on the sampling production that went into a song by Type 4. Um, type 4. We've got a website up, type4music.com. <clears throat> That's it. It's real simple. It's just a landing pad with links to everywhere else. So if you want to check us out on Spotify, on <clears throat> uh, buy our stuff on iTunes or Amazon, um, streaming everywhere, you know, SoundCloud's on there, everything. So YouTube, which this will be on YouTube. Uh, if you want to check us out, just go to type4music.com. I'm gonna I'm gonna write it in letters right here, right here. I'll make sure I won't forget it. It'll be a logo right here, type4.com. Um, today, well, last time I looked at Beat, which was the intro to the to our 2008 album, As Is, and was a kind of return to form after losing Brian, losing Eric, and just. You know, not even knowing if Type 4 was going to survive anymore. Today I'm going to go back and uh, back into time and look at the intro song to our first album, our first real complete album release, uh, 1997's Trail Mix, which I don't have, well, CD's uh, right there, but um, I also have on cassette. So. Trail Mix was, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to give 20 minutes of backstory this time, but uh, Trail Mix, like most bands' first real album, it was a compilation to date of all of our best work from when we, when we founded, really. So in, uh, you know, Tom and Brian got together in 1990, I came along at the end of 92, we did Bubbles in My Bong, released that, you know, that was four-track production. Um, so we did four-track production for about a year, and then in 93, um, well, only about six months, really, because um, around my birthday, in the summer of 93, I got the 16-track uh, ADATs, was able to do 16-track digital production, and everything just skyrocketed. We did, you know, Catcher in the Rhyme, <laughs> which I just got done watching a um, video I had from our visit to Magnus Johnstone uh, in 97 and Magnus, though I loved him he was like a father figure to me a big inspiration, big support and uh, turns out, you know, a friend uh, had a very charming ability to not get song titles correct so it was Catch from the Rye it was Green Fire uh, if, if you if you get, I remember him introducing uh, La Kim Shabazz as M C L A Kim, you know, just very lovable. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we had done releases on cassette, and we even did a 12-inch single, which you know, I don't have here, but um, I have I have a box of them if anyone wants to buy uh, a 12-inch single for Catcher in the Rhyme. It's uh, it's not good. It's. I screwed up on the mix, and we released it anyway. And then, like the week after, we went to get the thing pressed. I did a brand new mix, and that's what it has existed on Trail Mix and every version of Catcher in the Rhyme ever since. But that first version, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I rushed the mix. Too much bass. Doesn't sound great. Uh, but in '97, we had been. We had uh, Eric Goodridge and Mike Hass with us as drums and guitar, and we had been doing a kind of live band slash sample co collaboration, conglomeration, amalgamation. Let me look up more cinnamon, synonyms online. Also, cinnamons. I'm going to look up cinnamons online. So we, we had a bunch of stuff. We had enough really for two albums, but even though I originally came up with a two CD track listing that was too much you know Tom was just like yeah it's our first album people don't know us they're not gonna they're gonna ignore most of this and he was right so <clears throat> a lot of stuff came off and some of it some of the more savable stuff like um, coming off of the kids uh, got saved and put on for sale which was kind of half the last songs that we had done with Brian before he died and half leftover stuff so uh, long story long, Trail Mix 
it was pretty much done. All the songs were arranged and everything, but we wanted to do a song, and initially the the first song, first track was going to be called Trail Mix. And Trail Mix, the idea behind the title was that it was, uh, you know, a, a mix of everything that had come up to that point. You know, samples, guitars, drums, rap, chanting, singing kind of stuff, and just everything. A mix of hip-hop, rock, funk, reggae, trail mix. So that idea went into the production concept, the philosophy for the intro. And as I mentioned on beat, this is one of the one of the things, this beginning, is one of the things I'm proud of uh, that, that really worked. Um, oh, let me turn the subwoofer up. Because it was kind of trial and error. I, I had a bunch of stuff on cassette from when we had visited WKNH up in Keene, New Hampshire. There was a DJ named Mark Curdo. He went by Tuesday. And I forget his partner's name, but they had a hip-hop show up there. We went in 96, 97, played our stuff. And our visit to Magnus in 97, debuting a lot of our finished tracks that were going to be on Trail Mix. So, uh, I just found out that there was a, I had completely forgotten, there was a photographer there that day, um, and she took pictures of us with Magnus, and uh, so you get to see how goofy we looked in 1997. But also, two of those people are no longer with us, uh, Magnus and Brian, of course. So, these amazing, uh, snippets of history. I'm going to get prints of those from her. She sent me little thumbnails, you know, so I could take a look at it, but I'm going to actually buy prints and uh, and I'll scan those and show them to everybody. So Anyway, to the tracks. So I knew what I wanted for the beat and the music. Um, I think I'll start with the music and then I'll go back and I'll show what I did for the intro. Because the intro, I wanted a whole bunch of little snippets and sound effects and vocal samples and stuff kind of fading in, uh, fading across each other, affecting each other, and and just kind of making sense and building. So we, um, but for the music, there was, in 1988, I looped up a piece of music and a beat for a scratch instrumental that Charlie Murphy, DJ Cuckoo, did um, when he was kind of with, in terms of a rap group, uh, they were calling themselves the Action Packed Boys, out of Dedham and Norwood, uh, Kevin Ronco and um, Alex Ligouris and Charlie and, you know, 50 other people who would hang out in New York or New York, in uh, Norwood or uh, East Dedham and, you know, drink a lot. So, uh, and I did this piece of music and Charlie scratched over it. And I wanted to essentially steal that entire thing. I wanted to use the same sample, a version of the same beat, and I was actually going to sample Charlie's cuts off the four track master. So this is what I did. So we start with the main sample, which when it's in with the music you might not pick it out, but when I play it on its own it's fairly obvious what it is. <laughs> Love that Timbali roll. So that's from Get Down Make Love uh, by Queen, which um, if I go and find, I wonder if I even have it in my items. Let me see. I'll play the original. I'm not going to do this for every sample, but for this one, it's fun to, to listen to uh, what I did. Da, 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 da. Queen. Hello, Queen. Do I have. I don't. Alright, so I'm going to... <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to... I can find it on YouTube and whatever, but I'm not going to play that. What it is, is um, in the song, which is, it runs in Get Down Make Love, it, it runs slower. It's... Doom, 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 doom. But it's like, that only goes once in the song, so I, I looped it where I would... Dun, 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 And that pattern works so well. That ended up becoming, we did Touch the Hog, which by the way, this song, this intro, 
was going to be called Tramix and it had become Touch the Hog. In, in the same way that Burnt Orange became Burnt Orange and Shoe Funk became Shoe Funk and Bow Movie Car became Bow Movie Car. We didn't title songs back then. We didn't title songs as something. Mainly because we didn't do choruses, you know, so we didn't have... It's, it's astonishing. You go back and listen to Trail Mix or anything before it, there are no choruses. The, they stop rapping and we do cuts or samples or a mo movie sample or something. There really aren't any choruses. Um, and then, really, after Brian was gone, we, uh, we made an effort to... Tom really came to me and said, you know, let's have choruses. Let's have things that people can learn and chant along with and, you know, sing. Uh, and it's that's just songwriting. You know, you want to have... If, if Once we learned how to do it well, essentially... Maybe we always wanted to do it. We did something like Pass the Loopy, which, you know, the chorus sucked. So we were finally able to do a good chorus. We did a good chorus. Uh, and uh, for some people out there, that's a kind of a dividing line. You know, like if you ask people, hey, when did, when did Type 4 jump the shark? When did they start going downhill? Some people say after Bubbles in My Bong. You know, you know, nothing since then. So, you know, everything since 93 sucks. But um, some people... It's like, you know, we were doing the rappy rap thing, where you rap, 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 and then you stop, and then a bunch of cuts and samples and stuff come in for the chorus, or you loop a, a, a sample line over and over again. That's cool, but when we started playing out a lot, what do you do during there? What did, what did, what did Tommy and Brian do? You know, just kind of... So... It was great to have choruses that we could jump around and wrap along with. Uh, so, who was I talking about choruses? Anyway, this is uh, from Get Down Make Love. <laughs> and to, to add a little uh, effect to that, what I did is I added this track, a parallel track, where it was that same thing but I, I constructed a, a reverb where essentially it was an echo where it would trigger a fraction of a beat, like a quarter of a beat early. Then there'd be a reverse reverb fading in and then the echo would take place, a, a full echo. So you would, you would not hear the real, the, the clean signal. Then it would fade in a reverb from that and then the, the echo of the clean signal would start. And then I synced up, I, I started the sample early, so that when that clean signal happened, when that echo of the clean signal, signal happened, it would line up directly with the real one. So what you get is this backwards reverb, this sh -na -na -na, sh -na -na -na, like, uh, I'll show you, I, also, I added a really long one at the beginning, which I'll also apply here. Cool. how that fades in. These are the echoes just on their own. So, that was that. Um, oh, I was mentioning choruses or whatever, doing stuff live, because this became that da na 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 da na 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 da That became the, like, anthem, the opening track. Touch the Hog for our tour, for our 1998 tour, which we toured cross-country, playing in little chicken shack places and, you know, <clears throat> nice big places. And that's how we started our show. Da -na 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 -na, da -na -na. I, would, I would trigger that sample, and, you know, Mike would play guitar along with it, and, and Hank would ch -ch 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 on the drums, and it was great. And we kept on getting faster as the tour went along. We just started, we got bored with it, you know, playing the same thing every night, practicing during the day, and we just, all the set... We started off with like a 40 minute set, whatever it was, we ended up playing a 20 minute set, you know, because we just did all the songs really, really fast. And I was the only one that really noticed, because the samples, of course, don't change tempo, so I'm like, ah, play slower. It, this ended up becoming Touch the Hog. Um, that's what it was, that's why I was talking about choruses, because we didn't name them. Uh, Burnt Orange was named Burnt Orange because of uh, Hass's truck, which was an ugly burnt orange color. Um, Shoe Funk and Spam, just a goofy title. Bow Move Your Car, I'll save that for another day. That's a stupid little uh, story. 
but touch the hog <laughs> it was just it's one of those things that stuck and made us laugh so we kept it that that's how we did almost everything did it entertain us cool we were just doing it for ourselves uh tom and brian were rapping they would always rap on the same microphone ever since we figured out in early 93 doing bubbles in my bong that tom needed to be kind of on the mic and brian was kind of right down here i'm doing down here because he was shorter because brian had more of a projection to his voice whatever it was and tom has worked on that tom tom has a great lead now but at that point it was a little more laid back. It was slack and pace, you know, so laid back and, uh, you know, so it was like, it wasn't, they were doing Run DMC, but it was more like Tommy and Brian, whatever, it was type four. So we figured out that the two of them on the same mic, they had to be in a certain position, and they, they remember that. I didn't have to show them twice. As soon as it sounded good, bam, we just stuck with that. Always on the same microphone. And, um, and so, you know, moving around, rapping, eventually, every once in a while they kind of bump into each other or something. And, and uh, at one point, I think it was Brian must have whacked into Tommy's groin. And he was like, what, are you trying to touch my hog? I'm like, you can touch my hog. Touch my hog if you want. Touch my hog. Touch the hog. And then we almost, <laughs> it just like became, we laughed about it for five minutes and then that became the name of the song, Touch the Hog. Uh, when we went on tour and we ended up in Netherland, Colorado, and we played at a place called Moontime, which I think is no longer there. Great little place, little hippie crossroads, and they loved, the, they loved us there. When we went there, we showed up to play, and they had our CD in their jukebox. We proceeded to ruin that. We proceeded to essentially burn down the mountain. Uh, you know, there's no more mention of Type 4 in the state of Colorado, I think. Except there's this kid uh, calling himself Type 4 doing like that auto-tuner auto mumbly electro stuff um, he's like 16 or something and he's calling himself type 4 and uh, he can stop he can stop that anytime he wants you know just google the name your name and you will find out that we've been type 4 since 92 90 whatever so so he can stop but uh yeah we showed up and they had our CD in the jukebox and the first track was touch the and they just left it blank. I guess they thought it was dirty for some reason. So that's Queen. So that's the core of the song going all the way back to the DJ Cuckoo thing, which was called K00 Squared. The core of the song was that sample, the, the Queen sample uh, beat, which was just... Um, what is it? Synthetic Substitution? I forget who sings that. But anyway, Substitution Beat, which I thought of as the Ego Trippin' Beat by um, Ultramagnetic. Everyone thinks of it as the Ego Trippin' by Ultramagnetic. And that... But that was... Even by this point, I knew that that was uh, overused, too recognizable, whatever. So I wanted to use that beat, certainly, but I wanted to disguise it. So I sampled it, and I just I purposefully distorted the hell out of it. I ran it through through channels and just jacked it all up and made it sound crunchy and, and dirty. Um, and that ended up with this. I mean, you can tell what it is, you know. But when it's in with the sample, not as much. aren't quite right those uh, samples the queen samples way too loud but um, I also have a bass line going with that and it's just mirroring just mirroring the same thing well actually no it's not that's that's an old, you know, ragamuffin reggae thing, which even by then, 97, had kind of become associated with, uh, with Sublime. And then it goes, yeah, then the bass line changes. Where does it change? Here. 
to the point right so it's not just ragamuffin reggae it's the bridge is over which honestly Scott LaRock, whoever that was, who tripped over a keyboard and, and you know played the dun 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 dun, dun, dun for uh, the bridge is over by Boogie Down Productions. Did they know what they were setting into motion? I mean, that essentially became a rhythm. It became a a a, a formula. So we've got Queen. We have the effects on Queen. We have that beat. We have a bass line. Uh, in order to give it a little more energy. I wanted, when Tom and Brian's vocals came in, I wanted it to sound like a crowd was like, ah, they're here, you know, crowd uh, reacting. So I sampled the crowd. I think it's from uh, the end of Pink Floyd's Pulse CD, where they, they, leave this, they leave the audience cheering for, I don't know, five minutes or something like that. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I will take that. Thank you. They, that's Tom and Brian showing up. Start rapping. Start rapping right here. The crowd comes up. <clears throat> Which you know was exactly like that when we played those little chicken shacks in uh, summer of '98. You know, the middle of Nevada or wherever we were. So, beat, queen, crowd, sample, uh, the uh, bass line. Um, then we have a sample that Tom brought me a long time ago. It's from uh, Mark Morrow from uh, 88.9. He's a DJ, and he'd do his uh, M &M, DJ M&M mixes, which were interesting because you got a whole bunch of stuff all at once, but they're a little frustrating because he'd, he'd do a lot of sampling of lines. You know, it wasn't quite as, as frustrating as Def Jeff, D -d -d Def Jeff, Def Jeff, Def Jeff. Uh, but yeah, he would, you know, sample his own name over it and everything, which, you know, so you knew who did the mix. Eminem, Mark Murrow. But he did this cut, and it was, um, acapella. And it was, I don't even know where the song's from. Who sampled? We'll have the rock and roll. Rock and roll. And I think, uh, Public Enemy used that, but... So, that uh, goes over the beat. Then, I have um, cuts by, these are the cuts that I sampled from DJ Cuckoo, from Charlie Murphy. These are straight from 88. If you don't want to tell you to savagely, turn it up! So that's Charlie. I, I just sampled his cuts right from uh, the old four track masters from 1988. Um, another little cut. Was it? Yeah, boy! <laughs> that's towards the end. Alright, so. Getting through this a little faster. Um, other than that, we've got the leads, really. So, so they rap, crowd comes up, Charlie's cuts. Um, I have those ch -ch -ch rock and roll, those things. And then I have these little inserts. <laughs> know what this one is. Oh, all right, so a little bit of Charlie's scratching. Uh, then this goes in with what they're rapping about. That's a spray paint can, which actually was probably just like Lysol or something in the house. It was not a spray paint can. That is me actually 
pouring water from uh, one glass to another or whatever it is. I had this cool little Radio Shack full-size cassette recorder, portable recorder that had a stereo microphone on it. Um, and I go around recording everything. Little That's how I got the the um, radiator for a shoe funk and spam, you know, stuff like that. I just record sound effects in stereo, so it was cool. And then uh, this thing at the end of their rap, he said, yeah, we want a yeah, boy, but I want it different. Yeah, boy! So it's not just yeah, boy from uh, Flavor Flav. It starts off, yeah, uh, Beastie Boys, and then uh, goes to um, boy from, from uh, Flavor. What else do we have? Um, oh, and then after that... Yeah! School E D. And then right after that. What is it? I'll pull up on a GOE. Fuck school. Yep. KRS. You know, because it wouldn't be a song. I say this almost every time, right? It wouldn't be a Type 4 song with a KRS sample. Alright, so. What else do we have? And that's kind of it for the production on the song. You know, leads. Let me play a bit at the end of the leads. You can see the kind of thing that we got up to in the studio. Up your head, tag it not! Melly Bell. We had a blast. I have tapes and tapes of mess ups and outtakes and stuff like that. Um, yeah, leading into it. All right. Brian clearing his throat. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Still stop. And spray. I'm gonna go wipe my. We're fucking over everybody. No one's getting trusted. So yeah, I sent the uh, acapella of this to Chris McGuire, to Mogwai down in Australia. So uh, one of these decades, he's gonna do a remix of this, and it's gonna blow your mind. So that's the all the production on that. Knowing that I wanted a kind of long lead-in, fade-in intro to this, because it's just one verse. It is an intro. But I also wanted an intro to the intro. I wanted a beginning of the of the album that, you know, kind of faded in. I had left, I don't know, a minute or so of silence on the masters and then went back and filled it in with all sorts of stuff. So if we go through, essentially the idea was I'm going to put in little snippets of conversation recorded off of our visits to radio stations and other little things. So, again, most of it's uh, Mark Curdo, Curdo at uh, WKNH, and then Magnus Johnstone at WMBR. So what's the first one we have here? Turn it up. We heard Type 4 right there, an unreleased cassette, brand new from uh, Homies from Around the Way, Catch It in the Rye, Smile the Sun. <laughs> so, so right there, that's Magnus. Uh, again, you know, referring to us as Homies from the, Around the Way, but also saying Catch Her in the Rye. He says it right there. An unreleased cassette, brand new from uh, Homies from Around the Way, Smile yeah, and then that fades out, and we got the stuff to do it. We got the equipment. We got the twelve inches very soon. Yeah, We're about ready to throw the cash. We're gonna, you're gonna check it out. So if you want to hear some uh, type four, you just gotta. Uh... All right, so that was Brian and Tommy up at WKNH. Brian kind of talking out of his ass. You know, we got the <laughs> we got the twelve inches. We got everything. My producer. <laughs> Um, what next? Hey, look who's in the house. It's been a long Curdo. time. It's been a long time since we had a group up here. Type 4. I think I was the last one. Yeah. Make some noise to Type 4. It's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do a song that you've never heard before. before. Um, Way back. Way back. Way back. All right. Fresh. fresh. You kind of hear that. You kind of hear that um, in the intro, but some of the stuff you you don't hear. It's just way in the background. What is this one? 
Alright, type four is in the house. Uh, I'm a proper in Again, just what I needed. I cut off what I what I didn't need. That was from K and H. Check it out. Look for the type four. I don't know if we come out or if we die. <laughs> we are dead. We got found in a dumpster. Either way, check it out. When the shit drops. Rehab, jail, or radio. When the poop drops, check it out. Type four. Till the next time. Stay cool. Keep drinking. Keep doing them. <laughs> Peace. And we'll catch you a little later with some something. We got two. That's uh. That was Tommy up at and a little bit of Brian up at WKNH. Um, so, oh, and what was this one? Let's see. Type four in the house from Medford, Massachusetts. You hear that one? That's kind of how it starts. Um, and this, what are you? Talking about uh, Type 4. KNH. This brand new group out of the Boston area. I can't believe it. It's so hot. Type 4. Can you believe it? That was Magnus, and I was, for some reason, manipulating. A little snippet of bubbles in my bong, and then I have a little snippet of hard cap. Alright, let's hear it for Type 4. But that was, that was Curto on KNH. Uh, oh, it's on the lead is the hard cap thing. So we'll go to the lead track. And uh, it's Magnus. a group called Type 4. That was from beginning? No. Yeah, the beginning. Type 4 are going to uh, kick some rhymes and uh, lick some limes and... Uh... Little snippets. That's from the original four track version of Hard Cap. It all sounds like a mess it, when you, you know, but you put it all together and it all kind of fades in and out and everything just worked out. I was just hitting play on cassettes and seeing what worked. Uh, let's see, behind that. All right, so this is something that no one knows. You, you, you can't... I mentioned this in a trail mix commentary, which I started once, and I got up to the end of Touch the Hog, and I talked about it for 40 minutes, which I think I'm, I'm doing right now. But um, Behind all of this, with a stereo split, so it's like surround sound, I have a bit of Angel Angelo Badalamenti's theme from City of Lost Children, which at that time was one of my favorite movies. I was watching the hell out of it. I think it came out in uh, 95, 96. And I love the music. So, just behind all the talking, I put this, I faded it in, and you can really barely hear it. And that actually, it's not even from the movie, nor is it from the soundtrack, both of which I ended up owning. This was from, there was a trailer for this. I think it was on the on the um, VHS tape that our late friend Neil, Neil our late friend Neil Laspazio uh, stole for me from the blockbuster on Mystic Ave in, in uh, Medford. And... Uh, it was, there was a trailer for A City of Lost Children on there, and they played a bit of the music. So I just took it off of there, took it off the VHS tape. So that's behind it all. Uh, the other thing from a movie at the beginning that fades in, you might recognize. Fucking 
That's from right at the end, I think it's the last speaking part in uh, Richard Linklater's film Slacker, which I must have had on VHS already. And uh, there's a guy driving around town with a megaphone talking about a free record giveaway or something. So that's in there. That All of that, all of that stuff, all those little snippets just work together uh, at the beginning. Let me, the levels aren't great, but let me play it all together. And uh, it's right, type four a group called Type 4. Type 4. Type 4. Type 4. Check it out. Look for the Type 4. I don't know. If we come out or if we die. Uh, what type 4 can we watch? Check it out. Look some lines. Uh, 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 Alright. We're type 4 together. Okay, cool. Keep drinking. Keep doing them. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that's missing, because I didn't do it on here, I did it when I when I sequenced all the songs onto an ADAT tape to to master the album. The only thing that's missing is the little bit from Electric Company, the one, two, three, four at the beginning, because then it goes right into Magnus saying, and uh, <laughs> and uh, it's right, a group called Type. So that's kind of it. It's just all these little snippets of stuff, our history to that point, gathering, building, dovetailing into when the beat starts, when the music comes in. So, and then lead vocals, and that's what we call Touch the Hog. Yeah, looking at it, that that's all there was. Um, songs back then, I didn't quite have, because I was just working with 16 tracks, and one of them uh, I'll play it for you. Uh, it's muted, but uh, one of them was that. You know, for five minutes or whatever. It's a MIDI sync tone. I'm not gonna explain what a MIDI sync tone is. It's uh, it's embarrassing <laughs> using that you know state of the art 1989 technology. Uh, I used it all the way until God 2012. 2013. So that's Touch the Hog. Little look behind the scenes. I'm going to do more of these, more of the old songs. If you have any requests, any of the old songs you want me to take a look at, I can do it. Uh, Touch the Hog was the opening track to our 1997 album Trail Mix. That's available, you know, if you want to buy it, it's available on iTunes and Amazon. Uh, or if you want to just stream it, it's everywhere. You know, Spotify. YouTube and everything. Uh, check us out uh, type4music.com that's our website and has links to everything including this YouTube channel Type 4 Music. So thanks for watching Track Knowledge and I'll see you next time. Take care.